Hello folks and welcome. Today we're going over some environment design tips. These will be great for visual development artists, for concept artists, or for anyone looking to improve their sense of design and painting when it comes to painting scenes. This particular episode is going to be special because I'm going to be featuring your art and we're going to have a Pokemon theme. Also, stay to the end and I'll announce the next themed uh, challenge we'll have. And these are of course all over at the Discord link below. Alright, so I'm Tyler Edlin. I love Nintendo. I love video games. I love art and design. I do it professionally. I also do a lot of teaching. I don't have some big history with the Pokemon franchise itself. I dive into some of the games with my kids, but I do enjoy them nonetheless. But I did notice with the recent releases, Scarlet and Violet, that the visuals were kind of lacking, both in, in regards to their technical <laughs> presence and even some of their the imaginativeness with them as well. As you can see, here are two screenshots from the game. It, it, it's all right, right? It doesn't get your creative juices going. Uh, the first one it looks a little better than the second one here, but, but again, it, it lacks texture. They, they overall feel pretty bland. There is, a, again, a technical aspect with these, with, and I'm not going to get into that for this particular video. And that's why I task the Discord members with the challenge this month. It's like, what ideas could you have to reimagine or to improve some of the scenes and environments from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? So we're going to really look at that. Um, and as you know, like, yeah, it's not always just about style, because I do think if Pokemon is a stylized game, it is for children, but I think there's a way to do that well. There's a way to do that better. Here are just two screenshots from two other awesome RPG games that are very similar stylistically to the Pokemon franchise, both Nino Kuni and Dragon Quest XI. They were awesome. They were amazing. A lot of creativity went into them in every little texture, every little ounce of design, especially Nino Kuni. That game is top brass when it comes to design and aesthetics uh but who's really surprised by that it was co-created with studio ghibli as well as the popular japanese developer level five and of course dragon quest 11 is a very old very long franchise you know from square enix and it, it again it does the stylized aesthetics very well so with that said let's get into the art some of these will be examples of what to do and some of these will be examples of what to avoid First up, we have this awesome, amazing, colorful piece from my good pal Arnie Billen here. And this is a great example of what to do. The first awesome thing is using the rule of odds, right? Like there is a lot of repeating elements. We have like various types of characters. Again, a nice, simple, odd amount of them often work very well. It's a very nice, safe choice to do. The other awesome aspect that I like, and again, an awesome principle in environment design, would be visual hierarchy. This is high up on my list of very important things. So if we look at uh, the three elements, right, like which one's being prioritized? It's very clear in what is being emphasized here. And, and that's the key is emphasis. That would be this main character down here. It's not only being framed within this frame, like we could literally see it, our eye, the human eye always goes to an object in, in, a, in a window that's being framed like that, visually speaking. And of course, the value structure, most important, the values are very high. So yeah, having rule of odds and visual hierarchy is very important for environment designers. The other awesome aspect that I like about this is the depth of field. Not only do we get the cactuses out of focus in the foreground, but it helps, again, really sell that sense of depth. So much that I'd actually probably encourage him to go a little bit further with these shapes, with some of these shapes or edges around that main viewer. Like, again, the mountain far in the background. I think that's going to really help further emphasize that depth of field. Another little bonus tip that I like that Arnie did is not only does he have rule of odds, visual hierarchy, and depth of field, but they're actually making a nice little kind of trifecta of uh, design. Like when you can triangulate almost anything in a particular scene, surely it's a way of creating interest because triangles are dynamic, right, as a shape. So when you kind of break things down visually into shapes, and there's a lot of visual triangles in this particular scene, it makes for a very 
pleasing layout. Personally, I would have just closed the arch, but again, I think it's a wonderful piece. Thank you, Arnie. All right, so similarly here, up next for my next big tip uh, would be from Corgi. Uh, thank you, Corgi, for submitting your work. I think this is awesome, first and foremost, and it does show a lot of awesome qualities that we looked at with Arnie's. But I do think this is a great opportunity to, to show another major principle and element when it comes to creating environment design, and that is to maximize overlaps. Now this is overlapping them, almost maybe maxed out too much. So we have to have a little bit of uh, reservation when it comes to that. So for example, we have like a nice visual path through this picture. Again, I'm always a huge fan of that. That's a tip in itself, but it's getting a little congested with how these things are overlapped and placed. See like this is overlapped, this is overlapped, this, that piece is overlapping, that it's overlapping this, right? It Basically this whole area here is a big cluster of information and it, not to say that is wrong because it's not wrong but I, I personally would recommend probably to space things out a little and pardon me for my quick little mock-up here uh it's a little rough but just to kind of get the point across you know we, we move some of the trees out right over to here we blew these up have them break that boundary out, out of the frame and then of course we can really emphasize this nice little archway here Personally, I never had the time to move the character. I wouldn't align the character because that would make a tangent, which is kind of a, a tip in itself. And when you have things aligned in certain odd ways in the scene, that makes a form of tangent. I'd probably just offset the character, have it be right there, you know? But overall, I think just getting, uh, again, a little bit of a sense of atmosphere in there and to space out strategically how and where things are overlapped will certainly help your scenes. With these two pieces, I want to demonstrate the importance of exposure and balancing light and shadow. Again, these are both really awesome creative scenes. They're full of color, full of life and energy. I love that. But I would say maybe they go a little too far with that. So like, let's look at Timu's piece here first, right? It is loud. Visually, it's very loud. Very high intense yellows, blues. It's all maxed out in terms of saturation and intensity. Um, the chroma is. So I would say like a little bit of balance with that, desaturating that, lower the brightness a little bit, then strategically place some shadows in scene to help frame their image. So for example, if this is on the foreground, if we were to make this whole area here kind of in shadow, that would help frame and create a sense of depth. And this is kind of what I meant by that. So. Again, I simplified some of the shapes in the background. That just kind of helps communicate some of that visual noise, adding this whole area in shadow to start to emphasize um, the main characters here and as well as the Psyduck. It, it's, it's all about balance. So again, it's a little less saturated. It's a little less intense overall. And similarly with, with this piece, it's the same thing. It's, it's getting hit by this very intense white basically everywhere. And it's blowing out all the highlights in the scene. But again, unlike Arnie's, the other thing that this suffers from is a lack of visual hierarchy, right? That's kind of the issue here is, is we got like a path, right? Or if we follow that, that, that water or the river, I, and I think that's good, right? Visual paths are good. But what exactly is being emphasized around that visual path here? Is it these sets of rocks? Is it this area right here? Is it the sun and mountains in the background? Again, it really could be any of these or, or maybe none of those all the same. And why I picked those specific things because light and attention is being deliberately brought to all of those components. So again, you would wanna ask yourself when designing a particular scene, what do I want to emphasize and how can I balance that picture to express that? So when there's a lack of visual uh, hierarchy in a scene, it creates visual confusion. I don't know what I'm supposed to focus on here. And I didn't necessarily fix that. I did want to primarily use this to, again, it's about balancing exposure. And I think just bringing a lot of that down, right? Kind of taking a lot of the white out of it, reserve whites for really high speculars on metals and things. But like just bring those colors down a little bit, then choose what you want to emphasize and position the elements around your scene to help express that. 
All right, these two awesome pieces. This one from Zuriorat. Sorry, I've, I've probably been, uh, butchered your name. And this one right here from Justin Art from the city location in Scarlet Valley. One of my favorite locations. Again, underdone by the game. I think we can get an awesome lesson out of these. And that would be scaling and lighting. See, I love um, what Justin's doing here. But there are issues with, with scale. And I feel lighting could really help push that forward one big tell of this with scale and when scale is often a scene it can entirely take the viewer out of it and discredit the entire scene if we look at the tree in the background here right it's like that big so if that tree was in the city it's going to be that big absolutely dwarfing the buildings so what you would typically see in a, in a city of course would be trees much lower to the ground spread out like that and it just goes to show you that these are very giant trees that do feel out of scale now, in regards to lighting, I feel separating elements and components like this tree in this foreground with the use of extra atmosphere back here, it's going to help create a, a better sense of visual de uh, depth, as well as using the elements in the city to really uh, like buildings and, and the lights in there to really push that, that lighting. But I do think like bringing that component and I didn't even go all the way with it, you know, adding the lights and stuff will add a nice sense of life to that city as well. From a design standpoint, I would recommend both of these artists to create a, a sense of continuity and depth with these environments. Meaning like, what would you see on a port city like this? You'd probably see docks at the bottoms, lots of little boats zipping about. I do think that could help these quite a bit. Maybe there could be added suburbs with smaller buildings and neighborhoods around the buildings. Justin's could certainly benefit from something. Another thing that Justin did really well here was adding roads going to and from that city. And I think if this had uh, you know roads coming in and out of it, it'd feel a lot more natural and sophisticated as well because we need roadways to get to our cities. All right. Awesome stuff, Justin. I would probably move the focal point a little further in and then just do a lot more observation in terms of lighting. It does have a very flat sort of look to it. Maybe that's what you were going for. But remember, even at night, there's going to be moonlight. There's going to be a direct light, a key light in a scene that's going to create a sense of light and shadow. This just has no light and shadow. And that's what I'd recommend to study and to get reference of, of course, when it comes to painting a scene. All right, our next two pieces here from Kau. Again, sorry if I mispronounced that. And, and Tabor here. Awesome. These are these are very visually striking. I think they add a lot of character and depth that the game could have really used. If I mean, if this game was filled with art and environments that had this level of love and passion, I feel the game would have been a lot better if it could have pulled that off. These are absolutely fantastic. And I think for my next set of tips here, I'd really like to show the importance of unity and balance in a design. Like, look at uh, Tabor saying, this This scene is so well-balanced, maybe even to a fault in some situations. So what I mean by that is, like, if you draw a line down the middle, a lot of the big elements are really just framed out symmetrically. There are some asymmetrical elements, like the tree and the character, and I think it's wonderful for that. But I think going, like, a little bit further with that would have really helped this. So, like, maybe, again, breaking up one of the cloud shapes so it's not the same on both perhaps pushing the silhouette of this main structure, frame, framing it behind a big cloud like that. That will help emphasize that. And then maybe pulling back a little more of these clouds on this side to help break it or separate it from that right side a little bit more. But other than that, I mean, this is absolutely stunning. I love it. I think having a few more birds or a few wild Pokemon in the background surely would have added to that as well. But again, it's awesome nonetheless and i love this i love the lighting here and don't and be patient here with my quick little mock-up on this because it is rough and in areas it doesn't look as nice but what i would have done with this is maybe tone back a little bit of these waterfalls so that the ones that you do keep you can create a better sense of emphasis with again that will help uh, a sense of unity with that so wait for example i took away some waterfalls here and i think adding some waterfalls or, or taking some away to add some here to create a little bit of a, a slight emphasis here so that our eye could travel here and to here and to push the lighting along that path will also really help that. 
Also, if you're keeping the Charizard character entirely in shadow, framing that character with some direct light on a canyon right behind it is again a great way to emphasize that, which will ultimately really balance the piece out. So yeah, it's 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 a give and take process, right? And we have to be our our best editor at the end of the day when it comes to things. If we just keep throwing all of our great ideas into any kind of environment scenes, then we could overwhelm the viewer potentially. All right. And for my last tips uh, today for these environments, we have Ashton's and Super Arts. Th these are great. They have a lot of potential, but surely they need structural help. So for anyone that struggles on how to start or even end an environment, always go back to your structure. The structure is fundamentally the most important part to any scene design. Uh, block out your perspective, draw your perspective again and again and again, make a grid. I got videos on that if you need it. Cause again, there's inconsistencies and lack of structure that really would fumble, uh, you know, some pictures like this, no matter how many hours you put into it. So take the time and just plan, do thumbnail sketching, and of course, draft your structure with perspective. All right. And guys, for my next community challenge, it's going to be Breath of the Wild theme. We're already on the Nintendo train. The new Tears of the Kingdom's coming up. I'm stoked as heck. I've already started working on my fan art piece here. So let's all come together here and really celebrate this franchise and do some art that's simply inspired by the new game. All right, this will be due May 20th, and you can post them in the Discord link below. Thank you guys, and I'll catch you next time.